so I promised you guys a video where we talk about Shad, how we understand Shad a little bit better. Some of you guys said you're having some trouble consistently finding him. Um, if you fish from the bank, uh, that's the story of your life. You're going to struggle to find him. Uh, it's going to take you probably some years of developing places like I have. I've been Shad hunting for about 10 years. Uh, I've been casting for them for a little over one year. Prior to that, I usually just used panfish, you know, things like bluegills, because they got a, a really good oil signature, a lot of scent coming off of bluegill. Here lately, I've been using crappies just because they're easy to catch and they get the job done. But I can tell you now that shad are a far superior bait uh, when it comes to cut bait. Far superior, uh, in my opinion, to, to any panfish. So there's really three things that you need to be concerned with places that you're going to find shad from the bank so there's a cove right here behind me uh on a particularly warm day especially in the winter time uh this cove back here behind me just absolutely comes to life and fills up with shad completely and the birds are back there which is a tremendous indicator of where shad are uh, what the seagulls are doing cormorants and loons if they're actively diving in an area you know there's shad there another area where you're going to find them is going to be on boat ramps boat ramps are tremendously good places to look for shad but not just shad but also other bait fish uh, i've got footage of catching shiners and, and all kinds of stuff off of boat ramps I'm not 100% sure why that is. It may have something to do with the algal growth that grows on these. Presence of phytoplankton and, and other things that they're feeding on. It could also be that it's a, a large open area where they can see predators coming. The biggest balls of shad I've ever seen without electronics has been on boat ramps. Another great place to look for shad in a lake type environment from the bank is gonna be marinas or basically anywhere that's lit up with lights. Lights to a shad are huge and it's really not the shad, it's the plankton that they feed on is actually drawn to these lights. So if you have an area that is lit year round, shad are, in, shad are gonna congregate around those areas and marinas are terrifically good places, which is why I catch a lot of shad here. Let's say you're, you're, you're looking for shad in a river you're typically going to find shad in backwater areas creek mouths uh, floodwaters things like that places where uh, there's little to no current uh, they really like uh, non-current situations pushes them around a lot and also if you've ever looked at a shad they're an incredibly thin little fish uh, they're like little solar panels they absorb sunlight tremendously and the sunlight affects them tremendously winter days you can actually catch quite a few shad if you play your cards right now today i was hoping to maybe get on a few but today's it we're actually 26 degrees colder today than we were yesterday in about the last five or six days in a row so we're in a real cold front even though the sun come out and it feels wonderful out it's just still pretty cold uh, so the shad are deep they're very difficult to catch on days like this anytime you have cold snaps like this shad go deep uh, I wouldn't waste your time from the bank doing this. Uh, pick another day, like yesterday was almost 70. It might have been 70. Uh, would have been a tremendous day to go out and hunt for shad all day. But it's a process. Uh, you're not going to go out looking for shad one day and just be able to get on them. You're going to have to use mental notes, actual notes, uh, take pictures of things to actually locate places where shad frequent. And eventually you will start to catch them. The number one thing that you need to take away from this video is that you need to spend a lot of time just looking at water. You're going to spend a tremendous amount of time just watching water. When I look for shad, I literally just pick an area and I listen and I just watch. Sometimes I'll stare at the same place, the same general area for like 20 minutes. 20, and I've, I've done it for an hour before, before I finally figure out where they're at. So those are the ways that I find Chad. Just remember these little fish are extremely susceptible to environmental changes. So even slight changes can affect the way these little guys act. So yeah, those are the areas you want to focus on. Um, lit up areas, marinas, places like that. Backwater coves uh, that don't get a lot of like, they don't get a lot of moving water from like wind and things like that. Just really areas where the sun can beat down on them, warm that water temperature up three, four, five degrees in one day and the shad will come right in there and they're really easy to find. It's probably the only kind of fishing that I love that's even close to catfishing. Like when I get to, when I get to chasing shad, man, I, 
it, it's like the funnest thing. Like I just have a ball. It's hard, it's challenging. You gotta have your wits about you a little bit when you're from the bank. You're at an incredible disadvantage. I probably have more shad in my freezer than I do people food. My wife doesn't know that. So I guess we'll find out if she watches my videos or not. I hope this short little video was helpful to you guys. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.